Hey guys, come on in. It's going to be a really, really fun live stream today. We're going to jump inside of Unity and we're going to go through what I'm going to call the grimification. There's no sound on that screen. Let's grab this. Check. No, that's not it. Man, I can't figure it out. Oh, well, we'll figure it out later. We're going to go through the grimification process. It's going to be a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of fun. Grimification, well, I'm going to have to make you wait to find out what exactly I mean by grimification. I wanted to say a huge, huge thank you to Wen Yu Chen, Vinicius Rover, James Glynn, Augusto Panagiotis. I swear these are real names. <laughs> Glenn Crane, Christopher Rios, and Charlotte M. Welcome to Full Time Game Dev. It means so, so much to me. And by the way, if you want to join Full Time Game Dev, check it out below. I've actually uh, extended this sale. Actually, no, no, no. Oh, we have a day left. Okay, cool. Um, I thought we. I thought today was the last day. It's not the last day. 19 hours left, and there are 26 seats left to join Full Time Game Dev. And guys, I get tweeted at all the time, and I also get a ton of reviews and also a ton of screenshots from the Discord server of success stories or people who just love the program, um, like this uh, page of reviews here. So if you're interested in joining the program, it's 50% it's off. You're going to get 2D Art Pro and 3D Art Pro completely free. And you're also going to get um, Unity and also Unre the, uh, the Godot and the Unreal brand new courses. So check those out below. Are we live? Surely we're live. Let's take a look here. Sorry guys, I'm just like not seeing anyone in the chat. And that's very, 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 very rare. Let's see here. Yeah, we're live. Okay, we got 61 viewers. My chat says zero. Hmm. Why is my restream chat? It's not connected to YouTube for some reason. Man, this has been such a painful process, right? Okay, there's everybody. Well, no, you're not showing up in the chat. Where is the chat? It's been such a... Okay, anyway, <laughs> we're gonna keep moving forward. I'll see you. By the way, guys, feel free to download my free 2D game kit below. It's totally free. It's my treat to you. I used this exact 2D game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days, and then I got to play it in front of his subscribers, which was really awesome. Um, so download that. Use it however you want. It's my treat to you. Yeah. Okay. Now, one of the main issues... I, I got the chat to work, guys. Hello, hello, hello. Um, apparently, there's multiple chats you can select and restream. Uh, it's called Restream. Anyway, it doesn't matter. The problem with polishing up your game um, and adding a bunch of, in this case, grime to an environment is that you have to now apply this to the rest of the game. Otherwise, it's incongruent, right? Well, we're going to need to apply this level of detail to the rest of the game. So let's jump on over to Chapter 1. So this is Chapter 2. Let's head on over to chapter one. Yeah, Arc, Arc Player asks, I already, I already enrolled in the, the full-time game dev course. Do I get the Unreal and, uh, Unreal and Godot courses? Yeah, you do. Okay, so... Sorry, my back's hurting. Let's head on over to chapter one here. And... What we can see here, we're gonna to go to floor zero. The cool thing about reusing textures for your environments, this is actually a really big deal. Um, if you wanna change textures for your environments uh, globally, um, 
you want to make sure your textures are used globally. So in this case, we have this texture here, right? This very simple, it's very clean. We don't want that. Um, so we need to go ahead and open this up in Photoshop and grimify this texture. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, so it's right here. So let's open it up in Photoshop. Hang tight, guys, I'm gonna fix my light. Bum, bum, ba -da, ba -da, bum, bum, bum. Whoa, that looks cool and weird when the desk moved up. Ah, oh, there's the standing desk. Oh, <laughs> oh that's fun. Um, okay, so very, very simple here, right? Very, very simple. Um, this actually, I, I believe this, yeah, this is custom. This was created by me, custom. So I'm just gonna go ahead and merge all these layers together, crop them, and let's kind of think about the grimification, okay? What's the first thing we wanna do with grimification? Well, maybe add some dirt and debris and nastiness, okay? Um, so let's go ahead and open up textures.com, and I'm gonna buy a few textures here. All right. Let me log in, make sure I'm logged in. Oh, we're logged in, good, 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 okay. So let's take a look at textures.com here. Let's type in um, dirty paper. See what we can find. Oh, that's interesting. I kind of like those, that sort of splotchy leather. So let's see if we can grab the high res and I don't want the normal map. I just want a, a, a very simplistic texture we can use. I really like that. Um, it's probably not gonna be high res enough though. There we go. Yep, this is great. So we're gonna reuse this a lot. We have 1400 credits, so we're gonna go ahead and grab this one here. And fortunately, we're gonna be able to use this over and over and over again throughout our game legally, so that's good. So we're gonna open this up in Photoshop. Okay. So we have this texture here, I'm gonna copy it, and we're gonna paste it over top like this. Already, already, we're getting some really realistic vibes here. I'm gonna save it and show you what it looks like. So this is the benefit of using a PSD in Unity. Now it's brightened everything up, so you wanna make sure that you're using Multiply. Save it, there we go. It's a little dark actually, let's see what's going on here. So if I set it to normal, what I wanna do is I want it to be grayscale for one, and I also want to just have black and white. So no crazy gray values, because those gray values are gonna hurt us. There we go. If we set it to multiply now, or I'm sorry, overlay. Wait, what? Well, yeah, we gotta put something below it. If we set it to multiply, now we can see this dirty grime, okay? Let's take a look. Okay, good, it fixed for us. So already, already we're achieving what we need. Now you can see here, if you have too many distinct textures, then suddenly it looks like it's a part of the wallpaper, like it's a pattern, and we don't want that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find parts of this that we really like. You can even scale it up so that it's just very simplistic and generic. Let's see here. This one's gonna be tough, actually. I was kind of worried about this texture because it's just, man, I don't know why. Just something, something about this one texture I've always had trouble with um, in the grimification of it. So we can do that. Okay, let's save that. Okay, good, so far so good. That's great actually, already. I don't know if we need to do anything else. Obviously we want to make it loop properly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn off the multiply. We're gonna rasterize it, okay? Rasterize. And then we're gonna set the bottom to white. Okay, now hang tight. I'll show you what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna merge this together, flip it vertically, fade it out. Maybe, let's go to 100%. There we go, so that's gonna loop perfectly. Merge those together and then do a horizontal flip of a duplicate layer, okay? And then I can take this. Actually, we wanna make sure that we crop it and then duplicate it and then flip it. Yeah, I'm not feeling, I'm not feeling the inertia today. You can, you, there's um, something that you feel when you start working on your game 
because I haven't been working on this game all day. Um, been doing some business admin stuff. There's this thing that happens, and tell me if you agree in the chat. There's this thing that happens where when you start working on your game, it takes like 20 minutes to really get that into that flow state where you're not making constant mistakes. So we'll get there in just a little bit, I promise. That's fine. I guess that's fine. Let's merge this again and see if this actually loops properly. Set it to multiply. Go back to Unity here. Yep, okay, good. We have some nice little looping here or tiling. It's not bad. I think we can get away with it. Yeah, we can get away with it. Now, let's go through the gramification process similar to what we did yesterday. Now, for those of you who weren't with us yesterday, what we're going to do is we're going to take the crevices of, let's say, a wallpaper, and we're going to make those black. This is a really fun process, actually. Make them black and then blur. And as long as we have a normal map, it's going to work. Now, I'm not sure if we, don't, if we have a normal map for this one. Let's take a look and see. The normal map is actually incorrect. So we need to create a normal map for this as well, which is exciting because that's probably the number one reason why this texture has been so difficult in the past because I never had a normal map. Okay, how do you learn to code for free tutorials? Well, the way that I learned to code is I just wanted to make something. And so I, I you're, you're much more motivated to learn something when, when you're watching something being created. So I, I wanted to make a game about a boy in a coma. And, or that was how I learned ActionScript 2, which is like 20 years ago or 15 years ago. How I learned how to code in Unity with C Sharp is I wanted to make a game about a ministry who went to hell, and that game is called Pinstripe. I did your course. It's good, but it's not learning you how to code. No, there's, a, there's about 20 hours of, or 15 hours of C Sharp code in the course. Um, feel free to email Hector. Hector, if you're in the chat, feel free to email Hector. That's thomas at fulltimegamedev.com. And Hector and I, we, we work on that email together, and he'll help you with that. Okay, let's see here. So we're going to set that to overlay. We'll blur it a little bit more. Okay, maybe we just set it to normal. And then make sure it's fully opaque. Okay. And then I'm going to... There's a lot of tricks we can do here. Let's try this one. I'm, I have my doubts about this one, actually. Yeah, this one isn't going to work. Watch this. This is even cooler. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this again. Um, and we're going to invert it, and we're going to go white. Okay, good. So far, so good. We're going to convert that to a smart object. Then we're going to, again, remove all of it. And then when we fill in the, the lines here, we can make it look like the paper's edges are sort of peeling. You see that? I kind of like that. Now I'm just experimenting here. I'm not quite sure if this is good enough, but... I think that's pretty cool. Now, I can tell you right now that this is going to be too much. So we're going to fade out just a little bit so it's not too aggressive. Yep, thanks, Hector. All right. Oh, that's looking good here. Now, we need a normal map to get a better idea of if this is actually effective or not. So let's go ahead and get a proper normal map. Well, I like the texture here. I, I definitely like the, or the, the rippling effect here of this normal map. Um, it looks good, it looks good here. Um, but what we want to do is we also want to have a normal map of this entire thing. So I'm going to take this, copy it, paste it over top, and create a normal map from this. And because it's such a simp simple image with simple shapes, the normal map will actually look pretty decent. Yeah, it looks great. Um, yeah, we could probably do that. I'm trying to see how it looks. Yeah, it looks 3D. Okay, let's click OK. But I'm going to actually knock it down a little bit so that there's still that rippling texture. Okay, I'm going to save it as plaster normal, but with geometric wallpaper. Click OK, go back to Unity, and we're going to throw in the new one. Okay, there we go. Click Fix, set it to 1, and see what we get. Am I not seeing it? I wonder why that is, guys. Why is that? I'm not seeing the normal map. 
I don't think it's saved. That is so strange. Why do we not see the normal map? Let's add a light. Okay, it's working there. Is it because the lights are baked? We need to invert that normal map. I think it's because the lighting's baked. Yeah, now it's working. But not over here. That's crazy. It needs hard, hard, harsh light next to it for us to be able to see the normal map. Um, well, let's go ahead and invert the normal map for one. We're going to figure out what's going on here. Generate the normal map. We need to invert it. OK, there we go. Click OK. Save it. OK, much better. So it looks like that is like etched into the wallpaper. And for some reason, it's still not working over here. Let's see if we brighten this up, what happens. What's that light coming from? What is that? Is it this? Sorry, guys. I'm, and by the way, when we delete stuff, it's no big deal. Look at this. It's not lighting up the... Is that a different wallpaper? I think it might be. It is. No shine. Well, that's not good. Okay, well, um, we need to, I'm not going to mess with it though, guys. I don't know why we have separate wallpapers, but we're going to take that and we're just going to drag in the new normal map here. I, I do not know why we have two different wallpapers, but uh, strange. Dude, it's flooding so bad today, guys. Oh my word. I've got this crazy emergency alert on my phone. It's been just flooding the cul-de-sac I live in. Okay, so anyway, let's do 0.5 here. I don't know why. Um, I have no idea why we have two different materials. But it's okay, it's okay. So let's go up to a different location, make sure it's all working properly. Okay, so as you can see, I, I really, that, that's bothering me a lot actually. Select material, so we have Art Deco, and then this one's called No Shine. Why, why? I don't think we should have two separate ones. I'm gonna delete it and we'll suffer through it later. Um, because, man, we really shouldn't be using that. So let's go ahead and go to here and fix it. And um, hopefully this isn't gonna affect the rest of the game, but we really shouldn't have that strange sort of, that's, and I'm going to take the blame for that 100%. I guarantee you I was the one who did that. Because um, sometimes I do like testing and then I forget that I did it. Um, so let's just fix this here. Oh, what's it called? Art Deco. Man, I'm telling you, it's taking me a while to get uh, get into the swing of things today, guys. And by the way, if you're just joining us, just remember we have one day left to join full-time game dev. Full-time game dev is 50% off. We've got 26 seats left. And let us know in the chat what you think about the program. Hector Rodriguez, could you read my question too? I wanna make sure it's a good alternative because I want to learn. Yeah, Hector, feel free to answer questions, man. Um, Nick Dev Prod wants to know what we're doing. Um, what we're doing is a grimification of the walls and the textures. Look how clean this looks. Okay, everything's really clean. It almost looks toony. So these textures are used globally throughout the game. So if you can just make a change to one texture, the whole game can suddenly pop. So I'm going through a gramification process. <coughs> Hector, I appreciate you answering questions, dude. Um, okay, so that looks good. I'm trying to find a brighter area. That's cool, I guess. Now, why don't we add a little bit of shine like we were talking about? Almost as if this, this, uh, this material inside is like a film, like a golden film trimming the walls. You guys want to try that? So let's do that. Let's think, could we make this a golden trim? You know, that might be cool. So let's do a hue saturation shift, colorize, orange. 
that looks gold. Good. We probably want to do a little bit of an inner shadow if we're going to if we're going to be making it look like it's inset. So I'm actually going to do this. And then inner shadow. Soften it. You got to be careful with this cuz it can start looking beveled. So maybe we want to do it on both sides. Yeah, it looks a little bit better. Let's see if that looks good. This one over here is weird. Hold on. Yeah, and then blur it. I think that's going to look good. Let's take a look here. The gold is definitely cool. Um, I think the normal map's too intense. I knew I was going to have trouble with this texture. It's like, <laughs> does anybody know what I'm talking about where there's one asset or there's like a couple assets in your game and there's no apparent reason why they're so challenging but they're, they've just always because I've, I've been working with this texture for two years and it always confuses me we'll do point two here and then let's add a little bit of a shine okay so we have a metallic map the metallic map you'll notice there's no smoothness map here uh, I don't like that so we're gonna get the smoothness map back make it a little bit more shinier yeah, there we go. Just a little bit of a shine. And oh, man, there's so many things that are confusing me right now, like that shadow. Is that baked? No, it's not. That is a weird shadow, but okay. I'm not going to worry about it. That's cool. A little shiny now. So it really depends on the light source, obviously. So we don't want it to be so shiny. So bring it down. And then we're going to go to the albedo here and I'm gonna do my very very best to create a very vibrant golden shine okay white here save and then we're gonna to go to the we do have a metallic map yeah there we go and then we're gonna go albedo alpha so it has like a shine on it now so it's grimy, but it's definitely more interesting. You guys want to enter play mode and see how it feels? Do 2D games sell good? Um, 2D games sell fine. Um, I think both of my games, one of them grossed over, it depends on what, what you consider revenue. Like we signed a deal with Apple, we make revenue from Apple, we make revenue from console, we make revenue. So that game is probably over a million in sales um, between me and my publisher. So you, that's never song. You can do really good. Uh, Pinstripe is like 300 to 400,000 total, maybe 500. This, lo this looks a lot better actually. That's really interesting. I love that. Do you like do you guys like this golden trim? Pretty cool. Just want to make sure it doesn't distract the player too much. And I don't think it does. If it's near a light, it's it's uh pretty interesting. Yeah, I like that a lot actually. Okay. And it's 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 dirty looking. I like that. We could probably remove <coughs> some of the shine here by just doing a subtle drop in opacity in certain locations like this that let's take a look yeah that helps that's really cool look at that yep i love it big deal it's a big deal and i always say that to my team whenever there's something that's uh really effective globally for the game it's a big deal because it makes the whole game look different all right, I like that. Very good. All right, let's move on to another texture, okay? And what is the, the most important thing when it comes to texture work is understanding what all the different layers mean. What's an albedo? What's a metallic map? What's a, a normal map? What's a smoothness map? This texture here we could probably grimify. 
and it's not a it's not a global texture meaning it wraps around the pro builder mesh but it is it is a it is a it is a material that we use over and over in the game in chapter 1 so i'm going to take this again and we're just going to put it over top it kind of looks like stains right so we're going to kind of do it hmm we can do it across all of this here. Actually, you know what? We could we could probably get away because it's a square, our cube. We could get away with it by just putting it over the whole freaking thing like this. And then we could do a hue saturation shift, drop it down. This is going to blow your mind how important this is. And the way me and my team do things is we do things in phases or in sprints or you might call them passes. So we're not doing this while we're laying out the level um, the, or the puzzles. We're not doing this when we're creating the story. We're not doing this um, when we're doing lighting, right? We're not doing all this at once. We do it in sections or in groups and we, we set a timeline. So for this, for chapter one, we have two weeks to do the set dressing. Felipe's doing the set dressing and I'm doing the gramification. <clears throat> And this gramification was Felipe's idea, so huge credit goes to Felipe for wanting to create more grime in the, uh, in the game. So I'm going to rotate this so that the good parts are... Hmm. I think... Let's see here. Maybe we can go a little bit less, more contrasty. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, there we go. Do you guys see what I'm doing here? Just playing with the contrast. <clears throat> and we can obviously do uh, a, a levels adjustment. So you could say, okay, there's a lot more white, but it, we still have a ton of that black as well. Okay, let's take a look in here. See, we're gonna make this a... Thomas, can you not talk today? A Photoshop document? So I'm just going to label it as a PSD so I know which one it is. I'm going to drag it in. Watch this. This is a big deal. This is why making a game look abandoned is so... It's actually cheaper than making a, a, a game look clean and simple. Because you can make it look way more AAA by just throwing grime and trash everywhere. you got to be careful, though. It can be a little bit too intense, like this right here. So we'll drop it down. Nice. I think it's a little much. We're going to solve a lot of these. Uh, we're going to create more detail here by highlighting the crevices. Okay. So I'm going to go on a little crevice hunt. And I'm going to crevice, grab the crevices here and here. And I'm going to fill those in with grime. And we're going to blur them. But then we're going to also add, watch this, this is going to be so cool. I'm going to add this mask here. And you can see now the crevices. This one we can cut out and just do this. If we stack these enough, there we go. The crevices themselves are getting filled in with more grime. It's almost an AO or an ambient occlusion or an inclusion map, but it's for our albedo. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna kill this with a mask and now we can just paint those into the crevices. Oh, cool. Now I want to show you something. This is going to be cool. Anywhere it looks a little too blurry, like it looks cheap, we're going to cut with the polygon lasso tool. Okay. Now obviously, guys, you could do this kind of texture work inside of, um, inside of you know something like Substance Painter. But I actually enjoy this process. It's almost like unwrapping a present, taking the the wrapping paper and coloring on it. That's really what this is. Okay. Let's save that and just take a look. It doesn't look bad. And you can see it's, it's being used all over the place. Um, it's 
especially in this section here, yeah. Okay. But I can take the polygon lasso tool and just, this is just an instinct I have, just cut little pieces, almost like they're, they're cuts or slashes. Sort of cutting into the metal. How many gigabytes will Twisted Tower be? Probably about uh, 12. And I don't know if that's a bad thing, but that's what it is. Uh, I wonder if I can crank up the contrast here a little bit more. Yeah, if we crank up the contrast and the brightness like this, you can see it's more speckled. Cool. And then we'll drop it down just a tad. We don't want it too much, guys. It's You'll notice that AAA games, even though they're disheveled and dirty, it is a subtle thing. And in fact, the, normal, the, the smoothness map is what does a lot of the work. Okay, so let me show you. I'm gonna find a scratches texture on textures.com. So let's do scratches, see what we can get. And we can use this, yep. We can use this as our um, smoothness map. So I really like this one actually. Uh, but we're gonna do something pretty big, so 20, 2048 by 1024. 25 credits is fine, we'll just buy more if we need them. Ah, uh, the benefits of being funded. And we'll drag that in. One sec here, guys. Let me hop on over to, <sighs> yep, here we go. All right, we got it in here. Now let me show you what we're gonna do here, guys. The scratches are actually going to be only in the smoothness map, okay? And I'm gonna go pretty hard with this. There's our scratches. And I'm gonna flip this on top of itself. And we can use this as our smoothness map. Okay, so we're gonna throw that into the alpha channel. Save it and take a look at Unity here. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and say the alpha contains that information. You can see it's incorrect though. We need to invert it. There we go. What I tell you guys, am I right? If you go too hard, you're gonna get some weird colors. So just really be gentle with it. That looks great. Grimification process so far looks pretty good. We're gonna enter play mode and take a look. Yeah, if you wanna make a stylized tune shader game, you usually only will worry about maybe the normal and the albedo. Tune textures don't really contain metallic information. I think that's, that's what really makes them a tune shader. Very good. Awesome. All right, let's make this floor look a little bit better. You guys wanna do the floor? Nickel says, chat, when I've been in Thomas's live streams, he doesn't really answer outside of what he's doing. Is that usually true? Yeah, so one of the reasons why I like to live stream is I want to teach, but I also want to get content done or, for the game because I do have a contract with 3D Realms. And by the way, we can, we can like rotate these so it makes it look, look a little bit more disheveled, but that's going to be in the, um, in the, uh, Look, you could even do this. But you guys will notice that this is all in a different you know, process uh, or, or, or in a different sprint. I would never do this during the level design, ever. But our level design is done. So now we can just dishevel it. So it looks like it fell off. Or you could maybe lean it like this. Uh, yeah, I don't really answer questions usually outside of what we do in the in the 
in the stream what I'm working on. I know that sucks. But. Okay, so that looks cool. Um, what were, what were we gonna do? I kinda wanna do this one here because it's so clean. So let's open this up and just add some disheveling and some grimification. Right? So first off, we could just, again, reuse this. There we go. We're gonna save it as a PSD though because it's currently a PNG. And we're gonna use the PSD. And then we're gonna do albedo alpha. And so now you can see there's just subtle changes to the shine now. Already, it looks grimified. But we can go a step further <clears throat> and add that texture. Why isn't it there? That's so weird. Let's rasterize it. Alexa, fan on, please. And then uh, paste it here above this. Set it to multiply. And let's see if that helps. How are my movies coming along, Tommy? Pretty good. I'm about a third of the way through the edit for our second, our third horror film. I kind of want this to have an inverted alpha. Let's try this. No. Hmm. Yeah, we need to bring that down a little bit. Oh no. <laughs> it's fine. I wonder if we can add, let's add some subtle, just some subtle, subtle dark shades to this. Um, something like, this nothing crazy just like sort of punch in some dark shadows here see if that helps yeah there we go okay good 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 awesome i like it a lot um and i'm glad i waited to do the gramification process because you know about a year ago i didn't fully understand all of the different reasons for metallic maps and smoothness maps and normal maps so now i i, I have a good understanding of it so it's a lot easier to create. Um, the normal map here for our tile, could it be more? Probably maybe 0.5. And then we're gonna go ahead and again, grimify the, the edges. Okay, so this is a PSD, so that's good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna grab, with a threshold of 50, I'm gonna grab this here or, or, I'm sorry, uh, this. And I'm going to start filling in the edges. With some nasty grime. Just to make it feel like it's just, it hasn't been mopped. And maybe it was mopped, but it's just the constant foot traffic. I want this, this, uh, this hotel to be overly used, like it's a relic. Kind of like those old Disney hotels. Has anybody ever been to the cheaper Disney hotels at Disney World? They're not great. They're clean. They're clean. They're not like this, but you can just see and smell how gross they are. And then I can take this and delete that. Delete, delete the invert. So there's little holes in it. Probably expand it a little bit more, maybe with a, a tolerance of five. Yeah. And then delete. Let's try that. Oh, I like that a lot. So what we're going to do is fade this down and then paste it on top. There we go. And then maybe maybe do a like a, a little bit of a blur. Yeah. Let's take a look. Head down here and take a look. Yeah, what do you guys think? Let's make it look like the poly, the shine on it is, is, is peeling away. Now we're seeing some looping issues. So let's just go ahead and save all this here or merge all those together. And I'm just gonna fade out the edges. That's all I'm gonna worry about. Okay, what is going on here? 
it looks like there's a, a looping issue with the texture, the albedo underneath it itself. So all we're gonna do is flip it vertical or horizontal. Whoopsie. Uh, we'll crop it, transform, flip horizontal, and then fade out this edge over here. And then we're gonna merge all those together at the bottom down there and then do it again, but vertical. And then fade out one of the edges. And this should solve our problem, guys. It might be a normal map issue. Nope, there we go, good. You can see it's kind of loopy there, but I'm okay. All right, so you'll notice that it doesn't have any shine to it, right? Well, let's add some shine. All right. All righty then. And I just want to say a huge thank you to those of you who do join my programs. Guys, believe me, I know it's annoying to hear ad reads about someone selling a course. I get it. It, I, it annoys me too. Um, but I do believe in the programs and I know that they help a lot of people. But thanks for letting me do sponsored ad reads for myself. <laughs> and it supports the studio, so thank you. Um, now, I'm going to take just that dirt and I'm going to make that not shiny. Now, what we want to do though, let's grab this here and I'm going to just, just subtle texture work, honestly, over top of it. That, that's great right there for a, um, a smoothness map. And sometimes you can, when, when you're gramifying something, the smoothness map can be really kind of random. Um, but one thing I, I do want to do though is with this smoothness map, um, I want to have the, the little lines here. Can I expand those by like five? Yeah, I want those to not be shiny. So what I'm going to do is just fill that in with black and blur it. And we don't want it to be too intense. So what we're going to do is fill this in with black here. And then we can just take the paintbrush and just subtly fill in those lines. This is a great smoothness map. This is really going to work for us, I think. All right. Alpha channel. This is our current alpha channel. It's not my favorite. We're going to paste this in. Why is it doing that? Ah, merge all these together. Copy. Hang on. What's happening here? Stop. Whoa. Go back in time here, something happened. Merge these together. Copy. Go back in time. <clears throat> there we go, kind of. Does this need to be multiply? Yeah, and then go to channels. Delete our old alpha channel, paste it. Let's hit save and see what we get. Yeah, there we go. That is gross. Could probably do a little bit more contrast in the alpha channel. But remember guys, it's not looping properly. I'll show you how to do that in just a sec here. There we go. Let me drop it down a little bit. I don't think we need any metallic. bring up the smoothness just a little bit. It's always a temptation, especially if you're starting making games, to go crazy with the shines. Because it's really fun. But you want to be careful. There we go. That looks amazing. Okay. Good texture work, Thomas. Alright, I'm going to take this, bring it back here, and we're going to do that same flip effect. So transform, flip horizontal. Dirt, dirt. Merge those together. Transform, flip, vertical. Dirt, dirt. Maybe do a little bit more subtle down there. Wait, 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 wait. Redo. And then flip. Merge these together. Now we have a perfectly looping smoothness map. The smoothness map is stored in the alpha channel. Am I seeing perfect looping, perfect tiling? 
Oh yeah, let's hit play and take a look. That carpet's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm gonna show you guys how we're gonna do this. That's great, really gross. And this is one of the key reasons why the game has not, oh, we still have an issue here. What is that? This is one of the key reasons why the game never felt fully like a horror game because things weren't grimy enough. I'm seeing some looping issues. Why am I seeing looping issues? Is it the normal map? Let's turn off the normal map and see if it fixes it. Yep, it's the normal map. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back uh, into Photoshop with our normal map. Are the footsteps in? Yeah, the footsteps have been added for about a year. Um, and they are, that was a, that was a process. So the way that we did footsteps sounds is we had to cast a ray from the character controller and it's a system I'm really proud of. We cast a ray from the character controller. It hits a texture, whether it's terrain, the, cause terrain is a little bit different, um, cause they use splat maps or we hit a texture on the pro builder mesh or we hit actual meshes that are tagged and it, finds the texture and then it looks it up in a list to see which sounds associated with each texture, mesh, or area of a splat map, basically. It's, it's, <laughs> it's brutal, actually. Um, I'm glad we, we were done creating that because that was hard. I'm going to just create a subtle fade over here, merge those together, and then again, a vertical shift. Merge those together, save, and that should solve our problem. Let's take a look. Yay, that looks great, guys. Look how disgusting this looks. This place is old. Awesome, okay. So I wanna go ahead and do it with the, uh, the carpet as well, this red carpet. We use this red carpet a lot. Um, so let's grab the red carpet here, and we're gonna do this sort of uh, we're gonna do some stuff with the normal map, actually. I think we can make that the black portion look like it's elevated up a little bit. So I'm gonna take just this, that, and I'm gonna combine it with the normal map. <sighs> Unreal Engine is a step above Unity. Depends on what you're making. If the truth is, is that this game would probably be better served in Unreal. Yes, I agree. But me and my team, we understand this. Uh, we understand Unreal, or uh, Unity to, I understand it to the nth degree. Um, so it's really hard for me to let go of it, just because I understand it so well. Um, we're going to create a normal map from this. Look at this. We're going to do this. Actually, I, I want it to be pretty sharp. Click OK, and we're going to just blend it with the bottom. See that? So hopefully that'll create a little bit more of a normal map here. Yep, yep. So now it looks kind of 3D, right? We could even do two. Look at that, I wanna rub my feet across that. Can you feel it on your feet, guys? Yes or no? How many of you, if you were barefoot, pretend you're barefoot, now rub your foot ac across this. Do you know what that is? That's a visceral reaction to seeing something in a game. It makes you feel like you're more, uh, you're, you're more in this environment. And so normal maps like this are really, really important. That feels really good on my feet. I like the way it feels. Um, we don't need a smoothness map because why would the, why would the carpet be shiny at all? Um, the height map, I don't think it's correct. Now, I do have an issue here, which is our normal Carpet Art Deco Normal, I think that's okay. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. The height map, we're gonna do the same thing, but all we need is black and white data, but we're gonna blur it. There we go. So the height map should make it feel just a little bit more real. See, just it's very subtle. I love that. Okay, we're gonna save that and we're gonna consider, uh, we're gonna consider maybe some stains. We'll see. You know, I like having things look 3D. Again, this normal map here, it makes the carpet look 3D. The reason I like that is because I can go into just certain parts of it. 
and add dirt just like it got caught in the crevices and it's getting vacuumed and cleaned constantly but we're just not able to get into those deep corners right so let's see if that solves our problem yeah it's really gross All right, let's hit play and see if it looks weird. When you zoom out too much, you know, you bleached spots. I don't know about bleached spots. It's a little much, so let's, let's remove, um, let's make it a little bit more subtle. There we go. And head on into the level here and take a look. That looks great, guys. Okay, now, probably need to drop it down just a little bit. Okay, we also have a material that's green. So let's see if the green one's working properly. Select material. We have red, we have teal. There's green. We don't really use the green one that much. Um, what about red plane. Are we still getting that weird normal map? We're not. So that's fine. It's not my favorite. The red one is so simple. It's fine, I guess. Hmm. I, you know, there's part of me that thinks we could probably increase that normal map. Uh, there is really no normal map on that. Let's take a look. There's the normal map. Oh, I see. So we're on the wrong one. Hold on. There it is. Plain. Whoa. Surface inputs. There's our normal map. So you can see here we can make it look a little bit more. I kind of like that. I think it solves the problem of it looking too normal or too simple. So I think we're good. Um, yeah. Select material. Do we really need to worry about the other one though? Teal plane, what does this look like? Yeah, this one we probably need to do, increase the normal map as well, yeah. It's just so simple and clean. I don't think we use it though. That's the thing, is I don't even know if we use it. I'm just gonna worry about what I see. Okay, this is way too clean. And those are used a lot in the game. I don't know why there's one here. Um, the stanchions. The stanchions are really clean. So let's let's fix these are all over the game. So we're gonna add we're gonna add some serious grime to this. Um, we could probably just take one of our downloads actually. Let's close everything. Here's our stanchions, and then we're gonna go ahead and open up. Yeah, we could probably just take the texture from the paper, honestly, and just create some modeling. Modeling, right? What genre are we making? This is horror. I'd call it horror. It's not a survival horror game, but it's got that vibe. What would you call Bioshock, guys? What genre is that? Obviously, it's a first-person shooter. Um, but let's see if this fixes our problem. Now, there's also an issue with the... Um, there we go. There's also an issue, guys, with the... Oh, crap. We gotta, we've got some work to do. All of our stanchions are different. Uh, we have, like, three different kinds. So we're get, this is going to be some work, but... Um, Where is, where, did, where, where is it? Did I, did I not save it? Yeah, there we go. Oh boy. It's gonna be fun. So we're gonna swap out every single material and just get the, knock this out here. Okay, so you'll notice that the stanchion there looks like it's made out of like rubber and, and we really don't want that. You're also seeing some really strange issues here. So I'm not 
sure I even want to do it on the gold. I don't know if it's worth my time. So I'm just going to uh, do this, rasterize. And you'll notice there's no smoothness map, right? So I would say only the red, only the red here should be not smooth, okay? So the way we're gonna do this is we're just gonna grab black here and it's gonna be white. Okay, merge those together. <clears throat> Copy, albedo alpha is this, save it and then take a look. Gotta delete that and let's take a look. Good, okay, much better. So, oh no, no it's not, albedo alpha, whoa. We need to invert it, yes, okay. So we need to invert this. And this, guys, should make it feel a lot more realistic. Yep, oh, that looks so much better. Yeah, we definitely need to do this. Um, it doesn't have a normal map either. It, it doesn't seem to have a good one. Let's take a look here. Yeah, there's nothing here. Um, so I'm gonna take the, I'm actually gonna take the carpet, um, and I'm gonna take that, uh, normal map here and see if we can put it here so that it's got sort of a carpeted look or like a velvet look not velvet um what would it be made out of like a canvas almost or like a, a yeah velvet like a soft velvet yeah let's uh, save that and take a look Ooh, so that's great right there. That's really good, but that we don't want. So all we gotta do, remember, is just go here, copy this, and we're gonna use this as a mask for our normal map. Save it and take a look. So that shouldn't be modeled. What? The normal map is really effed. Hang on, what just happened? There we go fix it and that should solve our problem whoa yeah okay guys that actually really that did exactly what I wanted it to do brilliant alright so let's swap out the materials with these and again when you make changes to materials even if you're in play mode it's still gonna save them we'll drop the smoothness down it's a little tense there um, okay, so let's swap out the material. So we're going to select the material. Look at all these different ones we have. So in fact, what I'm going to do is first off, I'm just going to make sure the source is set correctly to albedo alpha. Good. I'm going to make sure the normal map is correct globally. There we go. But now we have to go into each one and add that grime and that, sm uh, that um, smoothness map. So this is our one we like. We don't like this one, so I'm going to delete it. I'm going to take this one. This is going to be kind of a, we're going to try and do this in batch here. Let's close everything actually. Okay. I'm going to take uh, the pink one here and then this red one here. And I'm going to take this, duplicate it. You know, we could probably do this really quickly. Let's do it quickly. Green. Is this orange? I'm not sure what this one is, but we're just going to do it. Purple and then the gold one, okay? We're gonna do this really, really quickly. Duplicate to every single one. It's kind of a pain, but we're gonna do it anyway. Be very, very thoughtful here. That one's good. This one, and then this one. One of the temptations you might have as a game developer is to wor say you're gonna worry about something later. Oh good, they're PSDs, yay! Oh, that just makes things so much easier. This one isn't, I don't even know if we use it. So we're just gonna delete it, I think it's useless. So we're gonna delete that and hope for the best. All right, okay. Um, okay. Guys, can we give a round of applause to Hector? Hector is so helpful in the chat. Um, 
let me think here. Sorry, I'm thinking um, that we just got derailed. No, I think we're good. Yeah, save all these. And then we're going to go ahead and go to the very beginning. Grab our smoothness map and paste it in the alpha channel of each one. And hopefully now all the different colors of our stanchions that we use throughout the game are ready to go. Um, let's see here. So if I have this here, select the material. I'm just going to drag on different materials. That works. That works. That's shiny. Why are you shiny? I don't know. Is it, is it shiny? It looks shiny to me. Let's take a look. Ah, set it to albedo alpha. For some reason, they didn't get set properly. There we go. You can't. Why? That's so weird. We can't do it uh, in batch. So you guys will notice that I'm picking objects to Grimify that are global. Because there's only so much we can do. We can't do it to every single object in the game. Um, but that looks really good. I think we're all set. Um, yeah. Yellow. Good. What is that? That's wrong. So that's supposed to be pink. There we go. All right. So our stanchions look much better now. They look real. And that's one of the, they look kind of real, I guess. Um, Grimification. Well, I do know that we use this brick a lot. But I want to go to, ooh, I love this. It's pretty grimy, though, but I think we could probably make this a little bit more grimy. Can we do it? Because I know we have a lot of this. So we use this stripe a lot. Can we do it? Mm. We might want to add a smoothness map to this. I think we could make it look really cool. So let's let's do it and see if it's worth our time. Okay, guys. Um, so let's grab that paper texture, pull it into about here, and we're going to see if we can create some kind of smoothness map out of this. First, make it grayscale. Then just go to our curves. So that there's certain parts that are just, you know, you could probably do it so that certain parts are, just a few parts are shiny. Almost like it's got guts on it or something. Here comes the rain again. Man. Hector, is it is it raining in Delaware really bad? Okay. That's our smoothness map. Let's take a look and see if this works. Crank up the smoothness here. See how it helps, guys? Smoothness maps are just great. They just add that extra oomph. Now, I'm kind of tempted to do the inverse. It looks like, like spit or something is thrown on there. It's kind of cool. The normal map for stripes, could we do a striped normal map, guys? Do you think we should do that? Let's take a look. I'm going to take all this here, and I'm going to go white. And I'm going to merge all this together here, copy it, and then go over to our normal map here. We're going to create a normal map out of our stripes and just put it over top like that. I don't know. It, this is probably a bad idea. Um, I'm going to say plaster normal stripes. Let's do plaster stripes normal. Okay, let's throw in that new normal map here and do like 25. Yeah. Okay, so I need this to be a little bit more intense. Save it. Let me drop it down just a tad, and then go to just one. I don't know. It kind of works. 
If we do this, we need to make sure we do this for every color. Look at all the colors we have. Okay. So we're going to open up all of these in Photoshop and we're going to make sure we just do the same thing, okay? So we have our normal map, that's fine, but we don't have all this grime, okay? Uh, there's actually a lot going on here, so I'm going to duplicate all of this to each one. Pink, teal, do you guys see why we're using Photoshop documents now? green and then red all right so each one is kind of grimy now I would say this needs to go over that yeah this needs to go over that this one's a little too dark so I'm gonna bring it all the way up good I think that's just too dark ah it's because it already exists yeah there we go some of them already have that grime on it All right, remember, we also want to add that alpha channel to all of these textures, and I think this is all we really need to do. Um, I think we need to adjust the normal map as well, the, the values or the intensity of the normal maps in the materials, but other than that, we're, we're good. Whew, this is a, a brain. It's causing a lot of brain usage right now. Okay, um, this is our wallpaper here. So we have these here as well. So we're gonna make the normal map one for all of these. Okay, so if I drag them on there, we'll see if it, it works. Those are too shiny, ah yes. Make sure we change the source to Albeda Alpha. I think the normal maps are a little too intense. Cool. All right, remember we, we said we wanted to work on that brick, but we're gonna go to a different level that uses that brick more. These trims are used all over the place and they look fake. So we wanna do with the trim, man, do we really wanna worry about the trim? I'm not gonna worry about it right now. There's so much to do. Yeah, the brick is used all over the place, so we're going to go to a different floor. Um, let's go ahead and knock this out. This right here. Let's grimify these. Uh, look how simple this is. It's like a tune game. So we, we don't want that, right? So what material, in your head, guys, what material do you think that this, it's always important to think about what material you want to use. What material do you think that these, this cloth should be? Should it be like a velvet? Should it be like a canvas? I'm thinking it's gonna have like threading in it. And um, yeah, but we can definitely use that paper texture. This paper texture is really effective. I use, I love using paper textures like this. So we're gonna do this. And again, do a curves. Really crank up that contrast here, guys. Um, set it to multiply. There we go. Pretty good. I'm seeing some weird shapes there. What is that? Is that lighting? That's a lighting issue. Because they're 3D. So that's fine. We're gonna make it not so intense, but we're gonna add a little textile texture to it. Maybe even a normal map. Okay, so flags, huh? All right, let's type in textile. It's like more like a yarn. That 
works for me. We'll download this one. Bring it into Photoshop. Here we go. This is gonna be a game changer. Hue saturation. And we're gonna crank up the curves. And I'm hopeful that the we don't need to do any weird stretching here. So Felipe's done a really good job on wrapping stuff. Look at that. Take a look here. I need to go a little bit smaller. <laughs> so what we're going to do is do this. Perfectly in quadrants. And let's see if that makes it better. Yeah, looks a lot better. Cool, huh? Texture is a really important aspect of games, guys. Um, it really is. Okay, well, you want to create a normal map out of it, you know? I kind of do, like, almost like the black part is much thicker. So let's create a normal map. Let's see if we already have one in, in the... Yeah, we do. So we have one in the material, but it doesn't do anything. So let's just generate a normal map. Yeah. That might work. We're going to make a PSD out of it. We also need a little bit more of that texture here. <clears throat> All right. Multiply, save, and then just go here. Do one more. Generate normal map, and then just drop down the opacity. Good, let's drag it in. That's great. All right, now let's let's add a little bit of weird uh, stains along the edges, okay? So I'm gonna go to textures.com and type in stain. Yep, uh, Radiant 7 were published by 3D Realms, so this game is published by 3D Realms. You know, we already have this one, so let's just download it. I'm going to open it up inside of Photoshop here, and what we're going to do is we're going to it needs to be seamless going down the edge here. And we're only going to take the black portion here. Set it to overlay. Okay. Then we're going to also add a little subtle. I want the bottom to look like it's like slowly absorbing, absorbing moisture from the ground and also from the top. Um, and then we're also going to cut that off. But just, just a little bit, guys. And then this we can drop down a little bit. All right, so now we have these stains. Well, we're going to fade out or remove it entirely, set it to multiply, and then now we can just color it in. See? Isn't that cool? Maybe a little bit there as well. I love that. Do it over here as well, but maybe squash it a little bit. Do another one here. Now I have a theory. I could be wrong here. Oh, that's so gross, I love that. I wonder if we can make them look torn. Um, if we do alpha clipping, the question is, is it double-sided? Good, it is. Okay. So we can create cuts here. This is going to be an interesting process, but we're going to give it a try. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to fill in areas 
that I think it might look cool torn. Like, like that maybe, one at the top here. Maybe a cut here and then one here as well. Hang tight guys. I just want to see how it looks. Is it too loopy? And we need to put on the other one as well. It's probably going to look too loopy. By loopy, I mean you just can tell. Oh, that's really cool. It's really creepy. So we're going to see if we can uh, if we can cut that out with alpha clipping. Okay. This one we can just flip like this, right? And then one more over here. Maybe just do that. Maybe bring this over here. And I think what we need to do here, we're going to take all these cuts here, copy it, and then group everything. Oops. Mask it out. Whoops. Save it. We don't need this to be masked out, although I don't even know if it matters, but we'll do that. And um, yeah, I wish we could sway them. That would be cool. Okay, so you can see we have alpha clipping. I'm just gonna fill it in like this. Yeah, that looks really good. What do you guys think? And we have different shapes too, that's great. That's pretty terrifying. And that's what we wanted. I, I really, really like that. The same is true with these banners. The banners are used a lot. Now, the problem with the banners is they don't use a texture. Okay, so I don't know if there's anything we can do about that. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Okay, yeah, there's nothing we can do about that. So that's fine. Next thing I wanted to do is focus on, let's think here. Those are fine. Yeah, we have a lot of cloth that moves, but these we don't want to move because they'll, they'll, there's just too many of them and they're going to clip into the, the pillars. Okay. The rugs are fine. Like, there's only so much we can do, guys. Um, so I'm cool with the rugs. Let's enter play mode and just observe. Normal map's too intense with the carpet. What am I seeing here? Okay, that's just a issue with the stairs. Those are too shiny. All right. We see a lot of boxes in the game. So we're gonna, we're gonna grimify those, okay? Grime of fire boxes. So if we open up the PSD here. Okay, it's not a PSD. So let's see if this is actually possible here. We're going to go to... We're just going to add a modeling to everything. Just want things to have just subtle splotches all over them. Like just moisture has been sitting in these boxes for years. 
Okay, let's throw on that new texture. It already looks better. Let's throw uh, one of these in, into a, a lit area so we can see it better. Okay, good. Probably drop it down a little bit. What other textures might you see on some wood, right? Uh, I think it's fine. The normal map, I don't know if it's intense enough. Yeah, probably need to be like three. Right. Mm, no. And let's fix this carpet before we forget. Where is it? Sorry, <laughs> my brain. Ah, yes, Thomas, come on, man. <laughs> Good. <clears throat> do the balloons have a texture? I doubt they do. Yeah, they don't. Now this is a little too shiny. There we go. Okay, guys. Um, the next thing I wanted to work on today um, was the the doors, man. So I'm going to go to floor one and we need to make sure we discard the scene changes in our GitHub. So I'm going to discard that before I forget. So floor negative one and floor zero, we don't need those. So I'm going to discard those on my right monitor here. Okay. So you can see all of the changes we made are now applied throughout the rest of the game, which is great. You know, that's, that's what we were hoping for. I do know we want to do that with the brick up there. Um, yeah, let's just go ahead and do the brick before we forget. So hopefully this is a PSD. We'll see. Good, it is. All right, so the first thing I want to do with the brick is make it look like some bricks are sticking out over other ones. Um, this is going to be interesting. So what we're going to do, I'm going to merge all these layers together. It's just too many. And I'm going to turn off, turn on contiguous and go to five and just select this one brick, this one. Whoops. Let's set it to uh, 15. Nope. Uh, 10 maybe. Yeah. And we're just going to pick a few that we want to stick out. Man. And I'll show you how we're going to make it look like that. Okay, we're going to take those, paste them over top, do a drop shadow. Okay. Now what we need to do is go back to our selection, expand it by maybe three. Yeah. And then we can copy that and then do the drop shadow. That way we don't get those weird shapes in the drop shadow. Okay. And they're going to be just a little bit brighter. Let's take a look and see if that, that made it look any better. Yeah, that's cool. Yep. And don't worry. We don't want it to be always occurring because then it looks fake. So you just take certain edges, fade them out. And you see, I'm using my mind's eye here to think what, what, is, what would look real. Yeah, and it helps to look at another monitor. I can see over on my right side a smaller version of this texture, and it, and it helps you see what it's going to look like in the context of the game. Yeah. Good. 
Okay, that's good enough for me. Um, uh, let's Grimeify it as well. Uh, we'll have Grime as, a, as part of the albedo, but we're also going to have a smoothness map as well. So here's our Grime. Again, go to our curves here, really crank it up, really choke it. You don't want it to look too unique though, because then you'll see that texture looping all the time. I can apply it to here, to these, in a different way. And then I can bring it down to these and it looks a little bit different. So I could actually bring this down here, <coughs> excuse me, and then rotate them. Yeah, there we go. Save and take a look and see if that helped anything. Yeah, it did. Very subtle. Okay, this is going to be a fun part. We're going to add moisture and mold to the cracks. All right, let's do that. <clears throat> so we're going to grab the cracks. We're going to expand that selection. Actually, we're going to merge everything together because we, we're good. We believe in it, so we're going to merge it. Expand by three. There we go. Fill in with a Gaussian blur here. Maybe even a motion blur. No motion blur, we're good. All right, set it to overlay and then start painting in the cracks. That looks bad, remove that. And I'll show you a trick in just a sec, guys. Right now it just looks blurry and weird. Um, so I'm actually gonna rasterize that. And then I'm gonna use my square marquee tool and just start making some cuts. And we'll blur it again so it's not so obvious. Look at that, you guys see why I'm doing this? See how it looks a little bit more realistic now? Okay, we'll do a little bit of a blur. Maybe even a, mo this one might, yeah, motion blur. Yeah, maybe by like five. There we go. Save it and let's take a look. Oh yeah. Right on target. That's what we wanted, my friends. How's it look from far away? It doesn't look bad. We'll probably drop it down a little bit. Do you guys see why it's so important to do this process after you've lit the game? after you've added post-processing, after you've done a lot of set dressing, after you've finalized the level design. It's important to do because these are such subtle changes and they're so integral and, and linked to the lighting. I'd rather finalize the lighting and then go in and add these changes. I may do it differently in the future games, but that's what I want to do here. Okay, now let's adjust the, the, the smoothness map. I think we do have one. Yeah, but for some reason, I don't think it's working. Let's see here. No, it is, okay. But I want it to be a little bit, sh I like the shine, I do. I like it a little bit shinier. But let's increase the grime. So again, we have a, what is it? Let's close everything, because I'm getting a little overwhelmed. Where do we use, ah, yes, we have grime here. Uh, we used that, what was that from? Hmm. I'm finding it, there it is. Scratches. So we're gonna crank up the curves here, or choke the curves. There we go, maybe a few more. And I'm gonna rasterize this, copy it, delete it. And this is just the, the shine um, being, whoops, one sec. The shine, uh, the, the, the maybe even a poly that's painted over the brick. It's being, or the polish, even if the brick is, or the, 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 the stone is polished, it's being scratched and the, the shines are slowly being removed. Crap, 
I had it and now I don't. Hold on. Where is it? Let's go back in time here. There we go. Paste it over top. And we're just going to sort of merge the two. This one we're going to do a uh, screen. Invert. Ah, what's going on? Hold on. There we go. There we go. Uh, merge these together. Put them inside of our alpha channel. Sorry. Ah, didn't copy for some reason. Copy, delete, delete this old channel, put the new one in and save it. There it is. Good, oh my. Okay, that down there is a little weird, so we're gonna fix that. Save it. Now, because this brick is used so much, I'm okay with I'm going to make that yeah, I'm going to make the cracks either dark or white. I don't like them the same color. So I'm going to grab those, turn off contiguous so it just grabs everything. There we go. I'm going to expand it just a tad by like 2. And I'm going to make those white and then overlay. Let me show you guys a trick here. I could blur this like that and then grab, grab it again and then contract so it's smoother. Uh, five. We'll do eight. A little bit more. Sorry. Oh, Thomas, um, five plus eight, okay, 20. So we'll do 20. Yay, okay, there we go, paste. Ah, yes, see how that smoothed it out, guys? Save that out and let's take a look and see how it looks first. Okay. I think I want it to be dark. And hold on, we're gonna do an overlay and then, yeah, that looks way better. Okay, good. Um, Drop down the opacity, and then we're going to do, I mean, I don't even know if we need to do anything. I, I kind of like it that way. That's really nasty. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Drop it down just a tad. Do I think Unity is better than Unreal? You know... <laughs> I think that's the incorrect question. I think most people should ask the question, what kind of game am I making? That's really the answer, in my opinion. But uh, that's just because I'm coping. That's what I'm told. Okay, that looks good, man. This is weird, it's a little too simple. And we, we use this texture a lot. It's the marble wall black. Yeah, this man, this needs way more modeling and, and distressing. Um, so I'm actually going to bring in that modeling texture again. Modeling, modeling. And I'm gonna just do this. Okay, let's take a look and see if that helps. Mm. What, 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 what we really should be doing here is a very subtle modeling, but then a big chunky one that's very, very tight and choked which is gonna be our, our smoothness map. Super choked. Majority of it's shiny, so we'll come over here. Yeah, there we go. Does this make sense, guys? What, are you guys learning anything here? I, I hope so. Um, I really do. We're gonna do this here, and we're gonna do multiply. Yeah, there we go. Um, copy that, delete, or at least hide it. Go to our alpha channel, delete, paste. Come on, man. Why? Stop. Why is it doing that? Copy. There we go. Paste in our alpha channel. And... Yeah, that, that should help here. Make sure it's on alpha. There we go. Does that make sense why I did that, guys? 
you just look up there and you see the shine slowly being removed from the textures. It looks great. No, Thomas, I'm completely confused. <laughs> Thomas, are we using decals? Yes. So Felipe is currently set dressing and he's throwing in decals all throughout the scenes. I hyped myself up in the shower. Wow. That's from Cybershell Rev. Okay. You know, whatever. Whatever floats your boat, man. Uh, let's go to this here. I'm going to add a little bit of of that modeling here to the screen. That TV screen is bugging me. It's too smooth. Um, I'm just kidding. Cybershell says, I hype myself up in the shower about my game being the best ever just to cope. Yeah, I know the feeling. Sometimes I write on the shower glass like how much money I'm going to make and how much I need to sell and, and then ideas and I do like trees and stuff for like what the game story is. That's fun too. We could probably choke this a little more here, guys. Ugh, looks like a Fallout game. I've never heard that. That's awesome. It's got that toony vibe to it, doesn't it? All right. So we have a new one here. Let's drag it in. Albedo Alpha. That should. There we go. Yeah, so there's like a. We could probably increase the. <clears throat> the brightness over all of this because it's just kind of hang on curves there we go it's a little too too much can you be more successful with with 3d than 2d uh i can't answer that i don't know i used to think it was 3d was the best but i still don't i still don't know so no idea, man. All right, good deal. Okay, pretty pretty gross. Everything's looking pretty nasty. Now we have a door right here. And the door frame in particular, oh man, it's been bugging me for ages. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, guys, I'm burnt out. Okay, if you want to learn exactly what I've learned in the last, well, 10 years of making indie games and also seven years of doing it full time. Check out full-time game dev below for the, the final day. Today is the final day of New Year's, the New Year's sale. Um, and it, that's for real. It is the final day of the New Year's sale. Um, and there, I think there's maybe 20 seats left um, after this live stream. So those are going to sell out. So be sure to check it out below. You get 50% off this massive program, probably the most comprehensive game development course out there. But you're also going to get my 3D art and 2D art programs completely free, but only for the sale event. And also, I've just finished the Godot course and the Unreal course. These are both included free in the program. So it doesn't matter which engine you want to learn. Um, you can pick whichever one you want. But the best part about this course is what Lord Grimm learned here, which is how to go full time with just a demo. Lord Grimm got a publisher. And in the case of another student, Chris, Chris of Squid Shot Games raised over $170,000 on Kickstarter. And no, I'm not lying. It says $100,000 there, but it ended up being $170,000 after the screenshot. He said, what is real life even? Thomas Brush's course works, everyone. Be sure to check it out below. Great reviews. I would argue this is the, one of the most comprehensive courses out there because it teaches the marketing side, the business side, how to work with publishers, how to get funding from publishers, six figures in funding with just a demo. It is freaking huge. If you're a student, let us know what you think about the program in the chat. And I will talk to you guys later. Cheers. Get over here. Get down. <coughs> hey, thanks for watching. By the way, if you haven't downloaded that free 2D game kit below, click below. It's my treat to you. I used this game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days and I actually got to play it with him in front of his audience, which was really cool. This game kit is totally free. It's my treat to you and you can use it however you want. You can make a commercial game and make a million bucks off this game kit. I don't care. Or you could just use it for a hobby project. It's my treat to you. And by the way, if you haven't clicked like, that would mean a ton to me. 
hit subscribe, and also, this is important, hit that notification bell, here's why. If you get notified of when I'm live, you can watch me make my next game, and let me know in the chat what you think about the game or any ideas you have, and you might just show up, your chat might just show up in the next video that I upload. All right, I'll talk to you later, bye.